The most effective response to a chlorine incident begins with careful and thorough planning. Anticipating all possible variables and situations that can occur during an incident is the basis for the site safety plan. A site safety plan is a comprehensive document that exists on any site that handles chlorine and provides a system for ensuring the safety of the responder, his or her team, and the public through communication of site-specific safety information. An effective site plan consists of the following elements. A summary of hazards that the team is likely to encounter. A review of the required safety equipment. A site map or sketch of the incident area. Specific work zones. Explanation of the use of the buddy system. Details of on-site communication. Command post information. An explanation of standard operating procedures. Information on medical assistance. A monitoring plan. Decontamination procedures. And other important and relevant information. The site safety plan is just that. A plan. Some aspects of the plan can be designated ahead of time and other parts of the plan must be tailored to each incident because each incident has its own unique challenges and constraints. We'll review each section briefly and point out which parts of the plan are often completed ahead of time and which parts are determined at the onset of an incident. A comprehensive site safety plan will be tailored to the specific location and available resources. The Summary of Hazards section will contain information on the likely chemical hazards that are present that a team will encounter during the course of the response. It will also identify compliance requirements with the applicable safety and health regulations. An overview of hazards other than chemical, such as confined space hazards, mechanical, electrical, biological, and physical hazards, should be identified. At facilities that produce or use chlorine, this can be done in advance. On-site personnel control what enters the facility and should be well aware of the hazards within their facility. The plan will identify and explain the required safety equipment necessary and available for the response. This includes personal protective equipment or PPE. The plan illustrates the different levels of protection and how the appropriate level is determined by the nature of the incident and the task performed. This is another aspect of the site safety plan where pre-planning can save valuable time. Based on published literature, such as the Chlorine Institute Pamphlet 65, Personal Protective Equipment for Chloralkali Chemicals, the determination for the initial level of PPE required can be made. Changing conditions may warrant a change in the PPE needed, but having an established PPE matrix can expedite the PPE selection process during an incident. The plan should include a site map or sketch of the incident area. It should be large enough to clearly show pertinent details and be posted in a conspicuous place. The components of the map should include details of the hazardous areas, site terrain, topography, buildings and barriers, land, water and air access points, work crew locations, and off-site populations or environments at risk. As a whole, the site map is used for planning, training, and developing emergency response strategies. The exact location of an incident cannot be known prior to the start of an incident, so this part of the site safety plan cannot be prepared ahead of time. The site map should either be outlined on a pre-printed map or sketched by hand. Work zones are identified, specifying hot, warm, and cold areas, which are determined by the nature of the incident and environmental conditions. The plan should address the concept of the buddy system, that a minimum of two persons are required for each entry team, that a minimum of two persons are required for a backup rescue team, and all persons on all teams need to be equipped at the same level of protection. Details of on-site communication will be included in the plan. Emergency alerting processes, use and description of radio communication, phone, sirens, etc. Instructions on the use and meaning of hand signals and a telephone list of the nearby community. The emergency alerting process should be in place long before an incident occurs and updated frequently. Command post information, such as the location and staffing requirements, 
will be identified in the plan. Standard operating procedures, as they pertain to the emergency response, will detail safe work practices and on-site response procedures, all designed for the safety of the team and the public. Medical assistance information will define a triage area and identify trauma center locations, distances, and availability. The site safety plan can include, ahead of time, where to find medical treatment techniques for the known hazards at that location, such as how to treat for chlorine inhalations. This can include reference to or access to pamphlet 63, first aid, medical management and surveillance and occupational hygiene monitoring for chlorine. The site safety plan must be updated during an incident to note the location of a medical monitoring and treatment area. This location must be situated away from any hazards as a result of the incident. The monitoring plan will identify how the area will be monitored for air quality safety and measurement, the monitoring equipment necessary and what is available, and is used in establishing work zones or action levels. A decontamination area should be identified and positioned upwind from the release. Procedures for handling the public and responders should be in place, as well as disposal of contaminated articles. Other important information that will be included in the site safety plan includes anything that is deemed necessary by the employer, staff meeting times, and a listing of equipment failures and any out-of-service equipment. Regular safety meetings should be conducted for each work shift, and personnel should sign off on the site safety plan after each meeting. The site safety plan is a critically important document, especially during the course of an emergency response. The responder must know how to access the plan and how to implement it. In addition, the responder must know the layout of the work zones, including hot, warm, and cold areas, entry and exit points, decontamination corridors, and areas reserved for medical treatments, location of the command post or where to report, the chain of command, individual responsibilities of the responder, training and knowledge requirements for his individual position and assigned tasks, and any other information that is deemed important by the employer or consumer. Finally, the responder should be in the mindset that the causes of the incident may not be accidental, but rather the result of a deliberate act. First responders should be aware that most shippers use cable seals to secure the tank car prior to shipment. If this seal is broken, this could indicate a deliberate malicious act. Caution and attention to all aspects of the safety plan will help ensure a successful containment.